blessed to present one of these insightful lectures entitled Earth Store Bodhisattva Sutra Contemplating the Karmic Conditions of Beings Part 4 of 6 on Between Master and Disciples given in English on August 9, 2015 in France. At that time, Erstor Bodhisattva said to the Buddha, World honored one, because I received the awesome spiritual strength of the Buddha. He is so humble, huh? But of course all the Buddha support him spiritually, energy, yeah? Yeah. So he can continue his job. I think the whole universe support him. Otherwise this is a very difficult job to keep going up and down and hell, you know, sapping your energies and strength, spiritual strength. Because I received the awesome spiritual strength of the Buddha, thus come one, I am able to divide my body and rescue beings who are undergoing karmic retributions everywhere in billions of worlds. If it were not for the great compassionate strength of the thus come one, I would be unable to perform such changes and transformation. That's also correct, yeah? But it takes a good instrument. Even if the Buddha bless him, it takes a good person, good being to do this, yeah? Otherwise, if someone is not worthy, even the Buddha bless him, it's like the rain on the raincoat. Make no difference. The Buddha bless all the same. Just someone can receive more, someone receive less, someone receive nada, nothing. Now the world honored one has entrusted me with rescuing and liberating beings in the six paths. I mean the six suffering paths, yeah? Like the human being, the, the, those of the ghosts, different ghosts, the hungry ghosts, yaksa ghosts, and hell and all that, and animals. One of the six suffering path is like that. Yeah. Until Achita becomes a Buddha. I mean, from now until then, the Buddha entrusted him to continue his job. I accept the entrustment. The Bodhisattva say, okay, <laughs> I can. Yes, we can. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> Word honored one. Please have no further concern. I mean, don't worry. I I make it. We can soon him. We make it. Then the Buddha told us to our Bodhisattva. First, beings who have not yet obtained liberation have unfixed natures and consciousness. Their bad habits reap karma. Their good habits bring rewards. Reacting to the situation by doing good or evil acts causes them to turn in the five paths without a moment's rest. I mean, apart from being human, they have other, you know, suffering paths. No liberation path, like into animals or ghosts, devils, hell and like that. Throughout eons, as numerous as motes of dust, they remain confused deluded, obstructed, and afflicted by difficulties. They are like fish swimming through waters laced with nets. They may slip through and keep their freedom temporarily, but sooner or later they will be caught. I am concerned about such beings. But since you keep making extensive vows repeatedly throughout successive aeons to take such offenders, across, I mean liberate them, helping them. What further worries need I have? Meaning the Buddha is not worried anymore because the Earth of Bodhisattva is taking care of all these sinners. After that was said, a Bodhisattva Mahasattva in the assembly named Samadhi Self Mastery King said to the Buddha, Word honors one. 
What vows has a store Bodhisattva made during so many successive eons that he now receives the world honors one special praise? We hope the Buddha will tell us about that. Then the Buddha said to Samadhi Self Master King, Listen attentively and reflect well on the examples I am about to give you. One time, limitless, are some kayas of nayutas of <laughs> inexpressible eons. <laughs> oh, long, 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 long time. <laughs> limitless time. Times immemorable. Yeah. Ago. <laughs> A Buddha named All Knowledge Accomplished thus come one, one worthy of offering, one of proper and pervasive knowledge, one perfect in clarity and conduct, well gone one, unsurpassed knight who understands the world, taming and subduing hero, teacher of gods and humans, Buddha were honor one. <laughs> <laughs> Appeared in the world. Oh, he has more title than Sekamoni Buddha. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> no, just all beings praise him and give him thus. Not like he come out and say, I am this and that and others, yeah. This is just to clarify the qualities that this Buddha has, all these qualities within him, yeah. He attained all that, yeah. So, Taming and subduing hero. He's also called a hero also, eh? Yeah. That Buddha's lifespan was 60,000 aeons. Oh, this Buddha, they live long. In those long time, they live long. Hmm? And then when Buddha Sekamoni here, Anand didn't tell him to live that long. <laughs> didn't say anything. So the Buddha gone to Nirvana fast. Before he became a monk, he was the king of a small country and was friendly with the king of the neighboring country. Both of them practiced the ten wholesome acts and benefit beings. Let me check out if I have the ten wholesome acts here for you. The ten wholesome action is like this. It's included the five precepts. Okay, may I <laughs> stretch out my legs? You guys also can do that, okay? Well, this should be okay. I see on TV all the boss they put their shoes. <laughs> they put even their shoes on the table. I don't know why. Probably feel tired, you know? So that my leg won't go to sleep. If I cross leg too long and keep talking, then my cell thinks I'm meditating, and then later it won't go anywhere. <laughs> I love you so much, so I have to go out and talk to you. Otherwise, I should meditate. You know, five times, six times a day, I meditate in the mountain. Every time is very long. Some, in some place, maybe only 30 minutes, 40 minutes, but mostly it's long hours. Yeah? And here, I meditate less. It's okay, I still get it. <laughs> I still get it. I can do both. <laughs> There's a beauty of it. The ten wholesome act is like this. Number one, no killing. Number two, no stealing. Number three, no adultery. Four, no lying. Number five, no slandering. Number six, no harsh speaking. Number seven, no greed. Number eight, no hatred. Number nine, no idle talking, mean gossiping. Hmm. Number ten, no delusion, meaning don't imagine that you're already very, very enlightened, but you're not. You know, when you're low level, don't think that you're very high. Uh, okay? There's a ten wholesome leap. Now, these two kings, together, they practice these ten wholesome precepts, or ten wholesome acts, very perfectly, yeah, diligently. Okay, okay. And benefits other beings as well, yeah? Because the citizen of those two neighboring countries did many bad things, the two kings made a plan using far-reaching experience. One king vowed to quickly become a Buddha and then cross over absolutely all the others. 
The other king vowed, I do not want to become a Buddha until I first take across all those who are suffering for their offenses and enable them to gain peace and finally to reach Bodhi, I mean, reach wisdom, become Buddha, and then cross over absolutely all the others properly. He want to become Buddha first and then take care of the others, good deeds after, something like that. And this one say he wants to save all beings and become Buddha first before he become Buddha. My God, this king is dreaming. <laughs> that means I don't know when ever he will become Buddha. The Buddha told the Bodhisattva Samadhi Self Mastery King thus, the king who vowed to become a Buddha quickly is our knowledge accomplished first come one. The king who vowed to keep crossing over all beings who are suffering for their offenses rather than to become a Buddha is a store Bodhisattva. Oh, now I understand. The first king wants to become a Buddha first and then ferry across all others, but they miss one word, that's why we don't understand. I mean, take a taken across all other people, all other beings. First become Buddha and then save all beings. And the earth Bodhisattva is the opposite. <laughs> First save all beings, then become Buddha. <laughs> Another time, limitless, Asamkhya aeons ago. Asamkhya, you must know, this is, you know, long, 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 unlimited, unlimited time. Okay. A Buddha named Pure Lotus Eyes, thus come one appeared in the world. His lifespan was 40 in. How many aims are you now? How, how, how old are you? <laughs> anyway, German, huh? Are you German? Yes. Don't Almost triple anything. Yeah, yeah, same. I don't understand humor. <laughs> <laughs> Too serious. <laughs> it's okay. Just joking. You're cool, you're cool. German people, that. Very serious, mostly, you know. They just honest, straight, yeah. hard working, yeah. and serious about everything. <laughs> of course, it's, it's correct too. Buddha business is a very serious one. <laughs> mostly, all the monks, and they, when they explain the sutra, they're not like me. Very solemn, you know. I haven't seen a, a monk who laughed during reading the sutra or explaining sutra for you. I haven't seen one, but maybe you have. Yeah, so it's, it's okay to be serious. It's, we are wrong, you are right. <laughs> All of this is wrong. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right. Another time, you know, limitless aeons ago, the Buddha named Pure Lotus Eyes appeared in the world. His lifespan was 40 aeons. Long, long live. That's why I ask you, how old are you? How many aeons have you lived already? <laughs> In his Dharma image age, that means when the Dharma is very, uh, very strong, yeah? Probably just the beginning or almost in the middle of the preaching time of that Buddha's lifetime. When the, when the, the teaching is blooming, you know, is. Uh, influential in the world, his teaching. An Arhant, Arhant, Arahant, yeah? who had blessings from rescuing beings, met a woman named Bright Eyes who offered a meal to him once while he was teaching and transforming beings. Uh, the Arhant asked the girl, what is your wish? Sometimes you offer a meal or drink to an enlightened one, they ask you, what do you wish? Then they can bless you to have that. You know, maybe this lifetime you have, maybe next lifetime. So the bright eyes girl replied, On the day of my mother's death, I performed meritorious deeds for her rescue, but I do not know where my mother is now, whether she has received the merit that I offer for her sake. Eh? Sympathizing with her, the Arhat entered into Samadhi to contemplate and saw that Bright Eye's mother had fallen into bad destiny, where she was undergoing extreme suffering. 
The Arhat asked Bright Eyes, What karma did your mother commit while alive that makes her now have to undergo such terrible suffering in a bad destiny? Hell. They said destiny, but you must know. So Bright Eyes replied, My mother enjoyed eating fish, turtles, and the like. She especially liked to fry or broil the eggs of fish and turtles. Every time she ate those, she took thousands of lives. Oh, turtles, fish, yeah? It's a, a bunch like that, it's thousands of... Uh, yeah, eggs of fish, oh yeah, of course. It's a very... Oh, a bunch like this, it's many thousands of fish in it. You know, fish to be, yeah. Ooh, every time she ate those, she took thousands of lives, and small lives, yeah? In the fetus, fish fetus. Still, oh God. Oh, Venerable One, please be compass- compassionate and tell me how she can be saved. Even just fish eggs go to suffer in hell. So scary. Aren't you glad that you are vegan now? Oh, it's good, it's good. Even before I read it to you, you're wise enough to follow my <laughs> advice. You good boys and girls, thank God for you. The Ahat, Arahant, huh? took pity on bright eyes and used an expedient device. He urged bright eyes, saying, With sincere resolve, be mindful of pure lotus eyes, thus come one, in the Buddha, yeah. and also make carved and painted images of him. By doing so, both the living and the dead will be rewarded. That Buddha is still in the world, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. So this is one of his uh, disciples. Ah, this Ahat was a disciple of pure lotus eyes, thus come one, when he is in the world, in this world, manifested in the world. Okay. So, um, bright eyes heard that, quickly renounced everything she loved, and swiftly commissioned painted image of the Buddha. Then she made offering before them. The reverence she felt moved her to tears, and she wept in grief as she beheld and bowed to the Buddha. Suddenly, near the end of the night, in a dream she saw that Buddha's body, dazzling gold in color and as large as Mount Sumeru, you know, the big mountain in India, emitting great light. He said, no, the Buddha in the, in the vision said to bright eyes, Your mother will be born in your household before long, and as soon as that infant can feel hunger and cold, it will speak. I mean, just born, huh? And speak again. Huh? Shortly thereafter, a maid servant in the house bore a son who spoke before he was three days old. I ask you again, how come all the Miracle happened in India. <laughs> you know, the same one before, right? Yeah. Lowering his head and whipping, he said to bright eyes, you know, the servant's son, the karmic conditions we create during our lives and deaths result in retributions that we ourselves must undergo. I was your mother and have been in darkness for a long, long time. Since you and I parted, I have repeatedly fallen into the great hells. Upon receiving the power of your blessings, I have gained rebirth as a servant's child with a short lifespan. I mean, he's going to die soon. Thirteen years from now, I will fall into the evil paths again. Do you have some way to free me so that I can avoid them? Meaning, although she's been rescued and reborn as a human child again, but she will... After she died, at 13 years of age, she will go back to hell again, if nothing changes in between. At least she is given a chance, you know? <laughs> so maybe she can change. A human's life is precious. Only being a human life, in human life, you can change your destiny easier. Yeah? If you're in hell, then it's impossible. 
if you're in animals of uh, kingdom, also very difficult. When Bright Eyes heard those words, she knew without doubt that they were her mother's, choked with emotion and soaps. She said to the servant's child, Since you are my mother, you should know your own past offenses. What karma did you create that caused you to fall into the evil path, meaning to help? The maid servant's child answered, I am undergoing retribution for two kinds of karma. First, killing, and second, slandering. Yes. Had I not received the blessings you earn to rescue me from hell, I would not yet be released from that karma. Wow. Yeah? This is really filial to mother by doing this. So bright eyes ask, what happens in the hells when beings undergo retribution for their offenses? The maid servant's son, servant babies, <laughs> answer to three days old and talking. The maid servant's son answered, I can't bear to speak of the ways in which beings suffer for their sin. Even if I lived for a hundred thousand years, I would find it hard to talk about and finish it. When Bright Eyes heard that, she wept bitterly and spoke into space, saying, I vow that my mother will be released from the house forever. At the end of these thirteen years, she will be finished with her heavy offenses, I mean sins, karma, yeah, and will not go back to the evil past, evil places, I mean hell, yeah. O oh, Buddhas of the Ten Directions, with your compassion and sympathy, please listen to the vast and mighty vow that I am making for the sake of my mother. If my mother will never again enter the three evil paths, lower birth, suffering birth, or also including health, yeah. never again be born into low stations, then here before the image, for pure lotus eyes, earth come one. I vow that from this day on, through our billions of aeons, I will respond to all beings who are undergoing suffering for their offenses in the hells. Or the three evil paths of any world, I mean, the whole universe. Wow, what a great vow. I vow to rescue them from the bad destinies of the hells, hungry ghosts, animals, and the like. Only after beings with such retributions have all become Buddhas will I myself achieve proper enlightenment. What a great vow. After making that vow, she clearly heard pure lotus eye thus come one said to her, Bright eyes, your own great compassion and sympathy is well extended to your mother by this mighty vow that you are making. Just to rescue a mother. What a daughter, huh? My contemplation shows me that after 13 years, your mother will be finished with this retribution and will be born a Brahman with a lifespan of 100 years. Brahman, first caste of India. After that retribution, she will be born in the land of no concern with a lifespan of un uncountable ayan. Wow. That means in that land you don't worry about anything. You'll be happy, have no concern, no worry. Yeah. Later she will realize the fruition of Buddhahood and cross over people, meaning liberate people and God, numbering as sand grains in the Ganges. The mother will also become Bodhisattva or Buddha kind. Yeah. Yeah, the realize the fruition of Buddhahood means she became Buddha, the mother herself. Shakyamuni Buddha told Samari self-mastering king, the Ahat, whose blessings help bright eyes then, is now inexhaustible intention bodhisattva. 
the mother of bright eyes is now liberation bodhisattva. Bright eyes herself is now a store bodhisattva. He has been extending his compassion and sympathy like that from distant aeons onward by making vows as many as Ganges sends to rescue vast numbers of beings. Mean he make vow again and again, same one, hmm? to rescue others before he became Buddha. But now the Sekamuni Buddha told him before, if you rescue as many beings as uh, you can until that and that Buddha come out, then I will also <laughs> certify you as Buddha again. <laughs> so it's not limitless. Now he will become Buddha. Maybe uh, aeons of aeons of aeons, you know, aeons of aeons of aeons later. Yeah. My God, what a patience. Men and women in the future may fail to do good deeds and only do evil, may not believe in cause and effect, may indulge in sexual misconduct and false speech, may use this visive and harsh speech, and may slander the great vehicle. Beings with karma like that should certainly fall into bad destinies. But if they encounter good and wise advisors who exhort them and lead them quickly to take refuge with the earth store bodhisattva, those beings will just as quickly be released from their retributions in the three evil paths. If those beings are resolved and respectful, if they behold, bow to and praise the bodhisattva, and if they make offerings of flowers, incense, clothing, jewels, food and drink to him, they will enjoy supremely wonderful bliss in the heavens for billions of aeons. When their blessing in heavens and ends and they are born as humans, they will have the potential to be leaders of nations throughout billions of aeons who are able to remember all aspects of causes and effects from previous lives. Wow, what a blessing. O oh, Samadhi Self Mastery King, Earth Lord Bodhisattva has such inconceivable, great, awesome spiritual power that he uses expansively for the benefit of all beings. All of you Bodhisattvas should remember this sutra, this story, yeah, and proclaim and widely spread it. Samadhi Self Mastery King said to the Buddha, World honored one, please do not be concerned. We billions of bodhisattvas, mahasattvas, based on the Buddha's awesome spiritual strength, will certainly proclaim this sutra widely throughout Jambodvipa for the benefit of beings on this planet. Having spoken thus to the world honored one, Samadhi Self Mastery King Bodhisattva put his palms together, respectfully bowed and withdrew. At that time, the four heavenly kings arose from their seats, put their palms together respectfully, and said to the Buddha, World Honored One, Earth or Bodhisattva has been making such great vows from distant aeon onward. Why is it that up to now he has not yet finished taking being across, I mean liberating all beings. <laughs> what kind of question? Even you can answer. No need to ask Buddha, right? What would you say? Huh? He wants to stay beings. What would you answer? Yeah. Yeah, the same. He want to to save. He wants to continue same being. So many beings. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Too many. So, so many. <laughs> he was. Yeah. And then they sin again and again, and then children born again, and grandchildren, and all that. <sighs> and why does he continue to renew his vast and mighty vows? Please. Word honored one, explain that for us. The four heavenly kings don't know this. I wonder. So heavenly kings are not all that great, huh? Yeah. 
Maybe they know, but they want to ask for the sake of others around there and also for beings on this planet. Maybe they know, but they just ask for the sake of others who don't know, huh? like the ghosts and, you know. The assembly is great with all kinds of mixed beings, right? Not just kings of heavens, but ghosts, <laughs> asura, yaksa king, all that. The Buddha told the four heavenly kings, Excellent, excellent. Now to bring benefit to you and to extend that benefit to people and gods of the present and future, I will speak about how earth's store bodhisattva uses his compassion and sympathy within the paths of birth and death in Jambud Vipa, in the Saha world, to rescue, take a cross, and liberate beings who are undergoing sufferings for their offenses. The four heavenly kings replied, Please, were honored one, we would like to hear about his work. The Buddha told the four heavenly kings, first, From distant aeons onward to the present, Earth or Bodhisattva has been taken across and liberating numerous beings. Since what he vows to do is still not finished, he continues with compassion and sympathy to help beings suffering for their offenses in this world. Moreover, he sees the ceaseless tangle of their causes extending on through infinite future aeons. Because of that, he renews his vows again. Thus, in this Saha world, on the continent of Jambudvipa, this Bodhisattva teaches and transforms beings by means of billions of experienced devices. He used countless means to help them. Let's just, oh my God. More? Oh, uh, more or less one more page. Four heavenly kings listen well to the killers. Earth or Bodhisattva says that short life spans will be the retribution. To robbers, he says that poverty and acute suffering of shortage, you know, of necessity will be the retribution. To those who indulge in improper sex, he says that rebirth as the pigeons or mandarin drakes, what is that? Or ducks will be the retribution. To those who use harsh speech, he says that quarreling families will be the retribution. To those who slander, he says that being tongueless and having cankerous mouth will be the retribution. This is slander normal being, you know, each other, but if slander the Buddha, then it's not like this. Uh, you go to, you know, forever hell, you knew already. Okay. To the hateful, he said that being ugly and crippled will be the retribution. To the stingy, he says that not getting what they seek will be the retribution. To the glutens, I mean, uh, ready to eat, he says that hunger, thirst, and sickness of the throat will be the retribution. <coughs> <laughs> Let me choose. Good for the voice, huh? Mm. To those who oppose their parents, he says that being killed in natural disasters will be the retribution. Just to oppose your parents, make them sad and, you know, feeling hurt when the children are disobedient and do bad things, so you will die in natural disasters. To those who oppose their parents, he says that being killed in natural disasters will be the retribution. Just to oppose your parents, make them sad and, you know, feeling hurt when the children are disobedient and do bad things, so you will die in natural disasters. To arsons, you know, the one who burn houses and forests for no reason, who burn mountains and forests, yeah. He says that trying to take one's own life in the confusion of insanity will be the retribution. Cause and effect, huh? <laughs> <laughs>
Wow. You would never think, huh? Die in disaster because opposing the parents. Probably in such a strong way, you know, violent way or something. To cruel parents or step parents. Oh, also. He says that being flocked in future lives will be the retributions. Being beaten by king. Yeah. To those who net and trap animals, he says that being separated from one's own relatives will be the retribution. To those who slander the three jewel Buddha Dhamma Sangha, he says that being blind, deaf or mute will be the retribution. To those who slight the Dharma and regard the teachings with arrogance, I mean looking down upon the Dharma with arrogance, yeah, he says that remaining in the bad path forever will be the retribution. No one can rescue you. Bad path, meaning uh, hell and all that, or suffering, way of life. To those who destroy or misuse possessions of the eternal dwelling, ashram of the Buddha, yeah. He says that revolving in the hells for billions of aeons will be the retribution. That is too much, huh? The Buddha normally don't care about possession. If they take it, the Buddha probably say, yeah, it's okay. So how can someone come along and punish this person in hell for aeons? That's too much, isn't it? Too much, right? Too much. One day is enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably one day in hell is in the eternal also. <sighs> Still I feel it's too much, yeah? People who, who text and misuse possessions is not much, you know, whatever. The Buddha and Sangha can't have that much. Oh, I guess I told you before, it's just because they harm the whole world and the universe by harming the Buddha and the Sangha, you know, make them suffer of hunger, thirst, or lacking of things, so they're not able to continue the teaching, then it's, oh, that's why, maybe that's why. Yeah. Because it's multiplied by all the people that they might benefit from the Buddha when he's well and, you know, healthy or enough strength to continue. That's why, or the Sangha, you know, that's, perhaps that's why. It's multiplied by the beings that benefit from the Buddha and the Sangha. It's not about the material things that they take, huh? Because the Buddha and Sangha don't have that much and rely on whatever offered to them. And if that's taken away also, in, like medicine or whatever they need, then this will be too much for, for the Buddha and the Sangha. If for us, we can go out and buy a new, new one. You see, for Buddha, can't. To those who defy the pure conduct of others and bear false witness against members of the Sangha. He says Sangha means monks, yeah? The assembly of virtuous people, yeah? He says that remaining in the animal realm forever will be the retribution. To those who scold, burn, behead, maim, or otherwise harm beings, other beings, didn't say animals or human. I guess both depends, yeah? To harm human beings is worse, of course. He says that undergoing repayment in kind will be the retribution. You will be treated the same in hell. I mean, long time, not just one time. Eh? To those who violate precepts and the regulations of pure eating, he says that being born as birds or beasts that must suffer hunger and thirst will be the retribution. Keep the vegan diet. Yes. That's the meaning. To those who make unprincipled and destructive use of things, he says that being unable to ever obtain what they seek will be the retribution. So every cause has an effect, huh? He just explained to them why you have to do good. Because if you do bad things, the consequence will be like that, yeah. So now you know, huh? Hmm. The precepts is like that. So to stop the future consequences, we can do past mistake, okay. 
from now down. Yeah, that's what it is. To the arrogant and haughty, he says that being servile, I mean servant, stuff, yeah, or low station will be the retribution. To those who use backbiting to cause discord among others, he says that being tongueless or having speech impediments will be the retribution. To those with deviant views, he says that being reborn in underdeveloped regions will be the retribution, I mean a wrong view, incorrect view. The bad habits involving body, speech and mind, karma, that beings of jambered vipa perpetuate result in hundreds of thousands of retributions similar like those above. I have listed only a few examples here. Since the karma created by beings of jambut vipa cause four different responses, Asta Bodhisattva uses hundreds of thousands of convenient means, yeah, expedient means to teach and transform them. Those beings must first undergo retribution such as those and then fall into the hells where they pass through aeons without being able to escape. You should therefore protect people and protect nations. Do not allow the accumulation of karma to confuse beings. Even if the Bodhisattva transform them, they still must be in undergo retributions and then fall into hells where they pass through aeons without being able to escape. So he said to the four kings, heavenly king, you must therefore protect people and protect nations so that they don't commit, you know, too much accumulation of karma that will confuse them. On hearing that, the four heavenly kings wept in sorrow. Even heavenly kings wept, placed their palms together, pay obeisance, and withdrew. Who wouldn't be sorrowful? Huh? We should really thank the past masters, monks, and nuns, and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and Nirvana, and also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. Okay, all right. That's enough of hell for now. <laughs> the hell, the hell of it, enough. Okay, next time, okay? Thank you, Father. Very interesting, but uh, <laughs> and another time, okay? You also need to rest and meditate, okay? Too much hell is no good. <laughs> another time, yeah? Because yeah. there is something that, how come the King Yama of hell has been, you know, they are praising. Praising whom? They are talking from the ring mountain, iron ring mountain, from hell. Ah, they go to the Buddha and praises him. Interesting. Maybe next time. Wet your appetite. Next time. Thank you very much for. <laughs> Thank you for being a good listener. I hope this really drives into the minds of the people to really understand that hells really exist. They have even names. So that they be careful what they're doing. So the earth of Bodhisattva won't have to be so diligently and working hard to save them. Hmm? 
Yeah, I mean, we can do many things. Why ho always make the Bodhisattva and Buddha work so hard? We can, we understand, and we should. Hmm? We should keep the precepts. Thank you very much. I wish you a good rest. Good meditation, a good rest. Okay? Everybody does good things. Somebody in, in Taipei, they, they air the real love, and the whole city <laughs> rejoice, and all the newspaper and media wrote very positive. It's so, it's also, everything is good. It's good for them, yeah? <laughs> Whoever rejoices in some of my poetry has some good for them. Mm. Good merit. <laughs> all right. Oh, I will add the song Bodhisattva right down there. <laughs> right down the record of their good deeds. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Say your name. Buenas noches. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Cha 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 cha. Love you, Master. Love you. Love you. This is Yeah. Translation. Yes. 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 Yeah. Thank you very much. Korea? Yeah. How's it beautiful in Korea? Aramdao. Aramdao. Yes. A woman, man, same? Yes. Aramdao. Aramdao. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. I love you. Bye. 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 More Bye. 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 More Bye. 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 More Bye. 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 Understand? Yeah. I can do 99%. <laughs> but 1% of merit I need from you, all of you together. 1%. And if not enough, then it's trouble. Yeah? Okay. Maybe someday. Okay, huh? <laughs> Are you scared? Listen to Boris Atmos. You scared? <laughs> huh? No scared? Yes, scared, scared. So behave, huh? Be good, okay? Think good, be good, do good. Yeah. Then no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Sleep good? <laughs> <laughs> Love you too. Bye, O2.